Hello fam jam, uh, this is Ruby over here to talk to you guys to, with a story time today. I asked you guys as per usual on my social media, Snapchat to be specific, what you guys would like to see from me this week and I put up a few uh, options and people voted and voted and voted and number one was a story time. So here we go with my first ever YouTube rendition of my famous story times which I do on my snapchat so this story time is titled drum roll please the time that I worked under a fake name in the United Kingdom bah, bah, bah. round and round all right, so um, a few years ago, uh, for all of those who have been following me for a while, if you know, I'll just give you a brief history of it a bit. So a few years ago, uh, I was dating Nash and we were still in a long distance relationship. He lived in the United Kingdom and I lived here in Canada. And at that point, we were trying to figure out what would be the best move for both of us. So I decided to join him in England for a few months, about six to seven months to see what's worth the move like is it better for me to move to England or is it better for him to move to Canada we didn't want to like make anyone move and leave their comfort zone without actually checking uh, checking both options so we were like okay maybe I should come first so I packed up my whole life and I moved to England for about seven months before I did that I gave up my apartment uh, I gave up everything I had here and I was like I'm just gonna go to England and I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do and I had a, a bit of savings so I had about $5,000 in savings. So in Canadian dollars, $5,000 in savings, when you ain't got no bills, can last you a very, very long time. Like if you actually budget it well, $5,000 can last you a while. Little did I know that 5,000 Canadian dollars in the United Kingdom is like $5. It won't go anywhere. It won't even proceed past this full stop. So I was really shocked when I got to the UK with my 5K that I had in hand. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to be all right for a few months because, you know, Nash would be paying rent for both of us because I was staying with him. So I thought, okay, I'm okay for a few months with the $5,000 I had. Little did I know when I got there that within like a couple of months, I would be broke, 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 broke. So... I get to the UK on a visitor's visa, right? So in a visitor's visa, you cannot work, obviously. So I get to the uh, UK on a visitor's visa and I thought I had enough money to just be able to do things on my own. And I'm the type of female who does not, and I repeat, I do not like to ask people for money. I don't like to ask my friends. I don't like to ask my husband. I don't like to ask my family. I don't like asking for money because I've always made my own money. So I was really, really struggling with that. Like when I started seeing my funds dwindle, 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 and I like to do things like well at the time I don't do it anymore I got children I used to get my nails done all the time I used to get my eyebrows did all the time my hair did so for me it was like a lot like all this money was being spent and it's quite expensive in England and all this money was being spent and I didn't have any income coming in so at that point I sit down with Nash and I'm like yo I think I need a job and he's like yeah but you're on a visitor's visa I'm like I know but I heard like people here can work still you know like a little underground thing can you like hook me up with something and he's like ah i know some peoples so he looks around he finds me a job so this is the part that gets really interesting so he hooks me up with a job we used to live somewhere near birmingham and so um this job was in a way off different town so one day nash puts me on a train sends me off to the middle of no i've never been to this part of england before ever in my life like just sends me off like a child going off to boarding school, you know. So he says to me, go with God, have fun, whatever. First of all, I don't know what this job is. Second of all, I don't know how long I'm supposed to be there for. I don't know nothing about this job because all we knew was that I had a job and I just needed a job because I just was like, I can't be broke, broke. I can't do that. So then I was like, cool, like, I'm, I'm just going to go and see what comes. I'm the type of female who can adjust to whatever situation I put in. You can put me in a palace and I'll be a queen. You can put me in the hood and I'll be a ghetto chick. Like whatever you got for me, I will do it. So I was like, nah. Let's go. Let's roll it out. Let's go. I get on the train and I go and I go and I go and I get to this place. I get to this place. I had been told by Nash that um, the owners of the company would be the ones to meet me at the train station and pick me up and explain what my role is and all that stuff. So I was expecting to be picked up. I wasn't just going into the blue, you know. So I get to uh, the place 
and like the city that I was gonna work in and the owners come pick me up it was a husband and a wife they were Zimbabwean obviously Zimbabweans helping Zimbabweans thank you very much I, I will always appreciate you guys you you helped a sister out so I get there they come and pick me up they were really really nice they were super nice they pick me up and I'm like oh my name is Rurembo and the man is like to me no 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 honey that is not your name no more and I was like what but it is my name that's the government name I was given that's my bit my birth name and I like it and he's like no 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 sissy that is not your name no more your name from this day forward is Toko so I'm like okay First of all, if you're from Zimbabwe, you guys know Ruimbo is a Shana name, Toko is a Debele name. Not nothing wrong with the name Toko. It's just in my brain, I'm a Shana girl, and so how 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 am I supposed to be a Toko who does not speak Debele? Like I don't. I was just like, okay, I guess fine. My name is Toko, so I get that name, and we head on off. I won't tell you the last name. So then now we head on off, we get in the car, we're driving, and then they're, I'm like, so what's the job? Like, what are my expectations? Like, where am I going to live? Like, I don't want nothing. And then he just says to me, oh, don't worry, you'll see um, your other co-workers will explain everything to you. We're just going to take you right now because um, you've come at supper time. And then after supper, they're going to go do their last rounds. And I was like, okay. So we get to the office and I meet all the other co-workers and the lady who is going to train me. So then we all head off to our... Um, like the last bit of the shift and I was training so I got to watch this woman do her job and I get there and I'm in utter shock because first of all I've never time the, done this type of work in my life in my life guys I've done all types of work let me tell you something here in Canada I've done all types of work I've cleaned bathrooms as in toilets I've cleaned toilets I've done everything but this job right here is the most difficult job I have ever done in my life. In my 32 years of existence, guys, I've never worked as hard as I worked for this specific job. So I'm watching them train and all we had to do was basically respite care. So um, there's a word for it in England, but I forget what it is. Um, but it's taking care of senior citizens who are basically just on their way out. There's no better way to say it. I'm so sorry, dear God. But there's no better way to say it. They're on their way out. And so we're just trying to make their lives as comfortable as possible. So we go into their homes. We, like, give them sponge baths. We change their clothing. Uh, we do some personal care, all that stuff. So I was like, ah, that seems kind of easy. I mean, it's not a great job, but for the money I was going to be making, because for me, I was always thinking in Canadian dollars. And I was going, like, I was making quite a bit if I was, you know, transferring to Canadian dollars. So I was like, yeah, it's a good job. And all I got to do is just, like, you know, clean a few people up, give them a little bath here and there. Seems very doable. That's the night I got there. I was like, this job is easy peasy. It's better than cleaning toilets, what I was doing in Canada for a little bit. So I was like, yeah, I got this. Ha! Huh, that was the first night. I watched them. Looks super easy. Now... After we do that, I asked the woman who was training me, I was like, so, like, where do you guys live? She's like, oh, we all live at the same place. And I was like, oh, okay. Is it like a, you know, like a hostel? Like, is it like, she's like, no, it's a house. We all live in the same house. Like, the boss puts up in this, puts us up in this house, and he takes off, like, a, a fee on your paycheck for the rentals. So you're paying for the place you live in. And I was like, oh, yeah, it makes total sense. We drive off to the house we all lived in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, Zimbabweans, like I said, I appreciate y'all giving me the job for 100%. I appreciate y'all giving me the job. I'll never forget y'all did me a solid. But the place we lived in, though, like, listen to the living arrangements. This is what I just need y'all to understand, okay? So we get there to the place we lived in. It was a three-bedroom house. It was a three-bedroom house. And there were 14 of us living in this three-bedroom house. Let Dear Jesus, how, how must we fit? How must we survive? And we're adults. It's not like there's children. We are strangers. I can understand 14 family members living in the same household, but 14 strangers living in the same household? Like, what is going on? And then you're taking off, off our, on our paycheck to pay rentals. So for me, I was like, ah. so we must all live in this house. So basically, the sleeping arrangements were girls got to sleep in with girls men got to sleep with men that's okay but we would be sleeping in like like doubling up tripling up in bedrooms like i remember i shared a double bed with another woman that i did not know my first night 
in this place a woman i just met i didn't even not even the woman who trained me because at least if it was the woman who trained me i'll be like ah you know what I, i'm a bit familiar with you i met you like two hours ago total stranger as in i get to our venue our living quarters and it's a total stranger and she's like oh yeah sleeping with me i'm like oh, okay cool I think we're sleeping in single beds or whatever, so, you know, just some, some comfort. In the same room, okay, whatever. I went to boarding school. I'm fine with seeing some female parts. I was like, yeah, whatever, I can handle that. But no, no, no. We were sleeping in the same bed. Same bed, total strangers. I just met you. I could not sleep at all that night, guys. I was so uncomfortable, fam jam. I won't lie to you. My level of comfort was on zero. The worst thing about this part that we were living was it was way out of, outside the city because it was very cheap. So it was way outside the city and there was no Wi-Fi at the house we lived in and my data was so crap like the, the just like the phone connection was so crap out here because it was in the middle of nowhere it was like in the country so for me to call my my husband at the time my boyfriend and tell him dear god this place you've sent me hey only only god can help me now i couldn't even tell him like we had to text because the whatsapp messages would like take a while to deliver but that's the only source of communication we had and i don't know nobody at this place guys i don't know nobody so remember my name is toko that's my name right so if you guys know a little bit about me is i used to have uh remember my name is toko that's my name right so if you guys know a little bit about me is I used to have a little like I guess a, a, a celebrity status I don't know what else to call it a celebrity status people knew me and I didn't know people knew me like that because of this page called Jirugufaya Nakeda and then we started our YouTube channel prior me and Otni my friend started our YouTube channel channel prior to me moving to England so people knew of me and people knew my face so my name is Toko but some Zimbas who work with me at this house know my name is not Toko they're like okay sissy but nobody actually has the guts to come and tell it to my face that they know that I'm not Toko I don't know why I, I up to this day if you if you if I work with you at this place please come and comment below and tell me why y'all never step up to me and approach me and say we know who you are now, 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 nobody said it. I just heard rumors. Like, it was now a whisper in the air that this chick is ruined, but her name is not Togo. Anywho, so I stay there the first night. I don't sleep. The next morning, I wake up. So, a typical work schedule, work day, right? Like, 12 hours max is what I know, especially here in Canada. You can't work more than 12 hours without now stepping into something called overtime. So we wake up at like five in the morning. So the woman I was sleeping with tells me you have to wake up at five so you can shower. And then we have to go because we, we have to report to the office by 6.30 because our first shift started at seven. And I was like, okay, makes sense. We wake up at five, we shower, we head on, we head on over to um, the office. And I'm just following suit, like what everyone else is doing. People would like make their lunches and then take them with them. So that's what I did too. And then we head over to the office. We head over to the office, we get our schedule. So we get our schedule. This is day one. I'm already on shift. I only trained the night before and now I'm on shift. I was asked... Am I comfortable doing this type of work where I have to lift people and stuff like that? I was like, you know, I watched it last night. I did it briefly in Canada for a couple of summers so when I was a student. So I think I'm okay with that. I don't see any difference between Canadian lift systems and British lift systems. I feel like it's the same world, world all around. So we get to my shift. It's 7 a.m. in the morning. And I'm just like exhausted because I didn't sleep, right? I'm exhausted. I'm like, ah. Whatever, maybe it's like a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. shift, maybe, and then I'll be done. If not, whatever, I'll, I'll see when I get there. So we go for our first round. So we did rounds. In, in a day, we did four rounds. So you do your first round from 7 a.m. till around 11 a.m. Then you get a break for 30 minutes and you go have like breakfast and stuff. Then you have another round between 11 a.m. and like 2 p.m. And then you have lunch. 
which was about an hour and a half. That was a nice lunch, so I appreciate the lunch. Then you have another round that was at tea time. So tea time in England is around 4 p.m. So you start another round from 4 p.m. until around 6 p.m. And then your final round starts from after supper. So we ate at back at the office. And then after that, we did our final rounds, which were from like 7 to like 9, 30, 10 p.m. 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. We would be going, guys. We would be working, 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 working. And not the type of work where you sit down in an office and you admire yourself looking at a computer screen. No, the type of work where you're rolling someone over and you're putting a pad under them and you're changing their tenor and oh my God, all day, all day from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m. That was the type of work I did every single day. So I would go to this city and I would do this type of work for about three weeks on. So three weeks on monday to sunday monday to sunday monday to sunday i would not have a day off until i go back to where we live with nash so i would be working my ass off i'm not even kidding i don't even know how some of these people did it because some of the people who were there would have been there for three four months non-stop and i'm like i i, I don't know how y'all do it because everybody needs a break like i i don't know why y'all work so hard it's just too much on the body but i did that so anyways back to the name so now I'm working there. I've been there for about a week. I'm starting to hear whispers, 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 whispers. <sighs> Finally, one day I get a text from another woman who was not in my team because everyone was in like teams that you work with. Uh, and she was basically like, hey, we know who you are. And I was like, um, okay, who am I? And then she's like, your name is not Toko. And because I didn't have her number saved, I didn't know who this woman was. I didn't know who I was texting, but I just knew it was someone from work. And this is a week into me working there. She's like, we know your name is not Toko. We know who you are. Your name is Muera Beta. Muera Beta was like my alias when I did like, when I started YouTube. So I'm like, oh crap. I'm just out here trying to hustle like the rest of y'all. Why, why are you trying to like, you know, because my boss had told me that I should specifically go by Toko because Toko is the name that I was registered under. So now I'm like, oh crap. People out here know who I ain't no toko and I'm a Mwira beta. And my worry was they're gonna like reveal this shit and like ruin me because I'm just out here trying to work. I'm just trying to work people. Why are you trying to ruin my work career? So I was so annoyed and I was like, I don't know who you are. So I, I called Nash because when we were on like, while we were working, I had network, not when we were at our uh, living quarters. So I called Nash and I'm like, yo, people out here, be calling me Mira Beta and stuff. I don't know who texted me this, but it's definitely the crew of Zimbabweans. Because after a week of working there, I sort of hung around like the Congolese people, the Sierra Leoneans. I wasn't hanging with the Zimbabweans for a reason. Because they just kind of like segregated me. Like they just all treated me differently. And I don't know if it's because of the Mira Beta thing or I don't know, because I was a new girl. I just ended up being friends with like the Congolese people. So I was like, okay, who's texting me? So she texted me and she's like, we know you're Mera Beta, blah, blah, blah. I text her back and I'm like, yo, I'm not no Mera Beta. You must be mistaken because that's not me. My name is Toko. My name is Toko. Me, I'm, I must look like this Mera Beta person you're talking about because I don't know that trick. I know who that girl is. I know who she is. If I was to see her in the streets, I, I don't know who she is. That's, I basically denied my own self. Just out of fear of being like, I don't want to get exposed. I don't want to get fired. I just want to work. I just want to put my head down and work. So I responded. I was like, I'm not no Mera Beta. Huh. This girl ends up going off for a few weeks. So I don't have to deal with her again. I ended up figuring out who it was that texted me. So another girl. So we used to like rotate rooms sometimes when like different people leave and different people come in. So I end up staying with this other Zimbabwean girl because when I arrived, I was staying with this girl from Ghana. So now I'm staying with this other Zimbabwean girl. And this Zimbabwean girl says to me, you know, um, I just sat her down and I was like, she became one of my really good friends. Let's call her Peyton. So Peyton becomes one of my really good, really good friends. So me and her one night, like we're in the room um, and I'm like, you know what? I know you Zimbabweans, I have segregated me. I don't know what it's about. I don't know if it's because y'all think I'm this Mira Beta person. And she like laughed and she's like, we know you are that person. We know you're Mira Beta. Like we know. 
We even, after we texted you and you kept denying, we even kept re-watching the YouTube videos and looking at you and being like, yo, this is the same trick. She just out here trying to play us. We know it's you. And I was like, okay, fine, it is me, but why does it matter? I'm just out here to hustle just like you guys. Can we just call it a day? You guys know that's not me. I'm not Toko, but can I just be Toko? Can you just let me live under this light of Toko? And she laughs and she's like, you know what? It's cool. We actually just, we just never saw you doing this type of work. We saw you like some sort of like high status lady and we never saw you doing this type of work. And we became really good friends and we both laughed about it. And I was like, you know what? It's so funny how people always see certain people in a certain light because of what you see on social media. And then you think they're like better than you or they try, you think they're like stuck up. Cause apparently the only reason the Zimbabweans segregated me is because they thought I was stuck up. But I was not stuck up because I was out here cleaning doo-doo like all of them. So I was like, I am definitely not stuck up. I am exactly the same as you. I'm just out here trying to make a buck as well. So that like, that's how I ended up being Toko in the UK. And I was Toko for a while, like a while. And it's so funny because even now, when people would say Rubimbo, I would be confused because I'd be like, no, my name is Togo though. Like, my name is not Rubimbo. That's not my name. And it was so confusing because at work, I'm Togo. And then when I go back home with Nash, I'm Rubimbo. And I was like, no, it's so confusing. My name is Togo. And then sometimes I'd come back to work and forget that my name is Togo. So then someone would be calling me. And you know, like when someone is saying your name, but it's not your name, so you don't respond. They'll be like, Togo, Togo, Togo. Hello, Togo, we're talking to you. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's me, right, duh, that's my name. <laughs> it was just such a weird time in my life, guys, but I had to do what I had to do. I had to hustle because I just needed the income. It was just, I couldn't live on my husband's income. Like, I'm not that female. I'm a hardworking female. I gotta get my own. I gotta get my hair did. I gotta get my nails did all on my own buck. So that's the story of the time I worked under an alias. And if you know me, if you met me during that time of my life, comment below. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it funny how we did that job guys but thanks so much for watching and if you can relate to this story if you've ever worked under a fake name in england or anywhere in the world let me know because it's like we all have these experiences as people from the diaspora like people in the diaspora trying to just make a living to take care of our people take care of ourselves because life in zim is tough and we gotta go out here and just you know do what we gotta do thank you guys so much for watching